What's going on, YouTube fan? It's your boy Tony Two Times, and we back with another video, man. And I promise y'all, part three, how I survived prison in Baltimore, Maryland, at age seventeen. But look, man, I shouldn't have to say this, but we sharing these stories not to glorify violence or glorify the streets, simply to tell my story and let the youth know don't go down this route. Now I need y'all to take a walk with me real quick. Now don't judge me. I'm gonna be a lot more transparent in this episode. Okay, so. I lived in Birmingham for a few years, you feel me? I was getting in a lot of trouble, you know. A lot of gang activity down there, a lot going on. People think because it's the South, ain't nothing going on. Long story short, I was fighting a lot. So me and my father, we really weren't seeing eye to eye, you know. My mom was in Baltimore. My father went down there when I was young. So basically, he sent me back home. Now, he sent me from a working class neighborhood you know, I had a basketball go. I had pit bulls in the backyard, stuff like that. Back to the trenches, basically. A one-income house, which was my great-grandmother. She got a Social Security check. Matter of fact, my mother got a Social Security check, too. They did the best they could, but between rent and between everything else, you know, it was just hard to survive. Sometimes it was hard to wash clothes. You feel me? Sometimes it was, I was eating noodles and bread, like, literally to get full at night. So, um, somebody asked me to go through this because somebody wanted to know what I was incarcerated for. So, I'm running down the story. Y'all bear with me a minute. So, um, you know, I was running the neighborhood, doing what I had to do. I was hustling. Me and my homeboy, Wayne, you feel me? We was doing our thing, you know? And, um, things kind of progressed, you feel me? Like, I met my baby mother, got her pregnant. I had a daughter on the way. At this time, I'm about 16. I dropped out of school. We had a little clip we called Gorilla Mob. You know, we was just doing our things, just trying to figure it out. You know, we was doing whatever to make a dollar at the time, you know. But long story short, I ended up picking them guns up, you know. I started robbing, you feel me? Because I felt like that was easier than being on the block all day. Now, for the people who say, why don't he just get a job and stuff like that, I did get a job at Wendy's. But between everything going on in my household and everything my child needed, it just... One covering it. I mean, she wasn't born yet at this time, but she was on the way. And plus, you know, my mother, she passed away, like, in between all this. My mother passed away when I was 16. So I lost my mother. It kind of sent me over the deep end. Like, my mind wasn't right. Everything was just all over the place. I felt like it wasn't no way out. I contemplated suicide, all that. Like, I was really going through some things. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. Nothing like that. I was smoking every day, drinking every day. My grandmother, this is my great-grandmother I was staying with, you know, after my mother passed away. She really couldn't. I mean, I love my grandmother. I miss her, too. She passed away a few years ago. That was my heart. But at the time, my mind wasn't right. She really couldn't control me. You see what I'm saying? So, um, long story short, man, me and my homeboy Ice, my man Ice just came home after, like, 12 years. He finally came home. But uh, we was going around, you know, we was doing our thing. You feel me? We was robbing everything we could. I was still hustling, but um, I ended up getting caught up with somebody I shouldn't have been messing with, and I went on a lick with this girl, and you know, long story short, I got jammed up, you feel me? People was talking. I got caught up in a robbery, a uh, robbery with a dangerous and deadly weapon. I also had first-degree assault. I had a lot of charges, but y'all know how the system is. They pin all them charges on you so they can try to make one stick. Um... But let's go into DOC. Now, DOC, after you get your time, like I said, I got 20 years all suspended, but five. For y'all that don't know what that means, a suspended sentence is basically to hang yourself. They give you enough rope to hang yourself. They give you a whole bunch of time over your head. So even though you ain't got to do all the time right then and there, when you come home, you're going to have a whole bunch of parole and probation. So if you don't do the right thing, you're going back to prison instantly. By the grace of God, I was able to do the right thing. But let's go to DOC. DOC is where you go after you caught your time. Now, a DOC is kind of like torture. You in your cell pretty much all day. Ain't no TV. You just caught your time, and you right in the heart of East Baltimore. You right in the city, so you can look out your window, see the projects, see people free, having fun. Mentally, if you ain't strong, it'll break you. So, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, me being young... And me really just 
trying to get this time out the way, thinking about my daughter. She was three months when I got locked up. By this time, she was born. Like I said, we had a run. We was doing our thing, hustling, robbing, doing whatever we had to do. But, you know, that came to an end, you feel me? So I'm locked up. My baby mother ain't bringing my daughter to see me. My mother just died. You know, I'm fighting. You know, I'm getting put in a hole. I'm 17. I'm doing 23 and 1 in lockup, thinking about all my mistakes, just thinking about everything. Like, you ain't got nothing but time to think and read. I read a lot of Donald Gorn's books. I just read a lot of books, period. Now, through all this, you know, I'm just trying to get things right with my father. Remember, we kind of got in a situation after he sent me back to Baltimore. I felt like he shouldn't have did that because he from Baltimore. He been down this road before, and he know what's possible to happen. It took me a long time to get over that. I had to understand it wasn't his fault. But at the end of the day, man, I went through that, and when I got to Hagerstown, it was kind of a little more freedom. It was a different vibe. A lot of my family was up there. You know, I was still running wild. I ain't learned my lesson yet until I really sat down and thought about life and realized what I wanted to do with my life. And my message is, and what I really want to do with my life, is help people that went down similar situations than me. Like me, I mean, because I was born in the projects, Lafayette Projects, East Baltimore. My whole family was crime drug addicts i came from that environment rest in peace my mom i'm not talking bad on her i love my mom to death she was an addict i got families that still addicts you know it's a tough environment when you come up like that that's why you shouldn't judge people because it's hard to break that mindset i still work on myself every day you feel me i know this kind of ain't like how i survive prison but like i said i got five episodes i'm just letting y'all know how everything all started and i'm really giving one of the family members, one of the subscribers, the rundown of how I even ended up in prison. So I'll do a part four tomorrow. But, man, so I just want y'all to understand the youth out here, man. If you stay focused, it can get better, man. I know it seemed like it ain't no end in sight. Just hear my story. It wasn't no end in sight for me. I couldn't see no way out of that situation. So I had to do what I felt like I had to do. God slowed me down because I probably would have been dead or even in prison for the rest of my life. If I would never got that time. So everything happens for a reason. But like I said, you don't got to go to prison to do these things, to figure out what you want to do with your life. I feel like I got a gift. I can help people because I've been there. I've been in a lot of these dudes' shoes. So that's what I want to do. That's what this YouTube channel really about. But sadly, people will rather watch, you know, celebrity news before they watch something like this. Now, watch how many views this get compared to my other videos. And I understand. I'm not blaming y'all. That's just how it is. That's the world we live in. But I want y'all to share more of these kind of videos and leave more comments under these kind of videos because it's real life. And I'm going to get into my life a lot. And I'm going to let y'all know exactly who Tony two times is. Or Tony, should I say. You feel me? I'm going to let y'all know who Tony is. So, you know, it was just rough, man, you know, growing up. And when I got in that situation, when I went to jail, man, it taught me a lot about myself. And it taught me how to be a man, like I always tell y'all. It taught me how to respect other people. It taught me how to think and think outside the box. And not always act off and post. But look, man, I'm going to do a part four tomorrow. I did this for a subscriber request. So y'all leave y'all comments below. Y'all let me know what y'all think, man. I love y'all. Like I said, don't judge me, man. Don't be leaving no crazy comments. Love y'all fine. We still on the race to 10K. If you want to support the growth of the channel, check out the links in the description. Or check out the cash app. Leave your comments, man. Y'all talk to me, man. Like I said, I'm trying to do this full time. Y'all help me get to that goal. Y'all help me grind these videos out. If you got any video ideas, let me know. Love, fam. I'm out.